Well, hello, folks. Welcome to another teeny tiny technical video from No SLLC. That would be we. Actually, it's kind of semi technical because I'm going to explore some issues relative to my own humble abode concerning plumbing pressure and flow, how the water moves around inside uh, my house and, of course, your house too. Although you may or may not have some of the things I'm going to show you here. Now, on one of our uh, videos concerning one of my plumbing projects uh, some comments went back and forth and back and forth and it got a little out of hand because uh, you end up writing a whole book doing that responding and so on so I decided that uh, I just put together a little video that showed all of the parts um, of the uh, plumbing system I'm in my house and kind of what they do so uh, hopefully everybody would get a, a more broad picture of you know how this stuff works it's pretty simple but it's also very complicated because uh, Certainly, I'm not a hydraulics engineer, not a plumber either. Don't even play one on TV. Um, but hopefully, this uh, overview will uh, clarify some of the issues for some of the folks that are not uh, particularly uh, clear. <laughs> I guess that's it. So you can comment on this video like all the other ones, but please, you know, keep it civil at least. Um, I don't know everything. I hardly know anything most of the time. But um, if you do uh, check out on the on the net for various things like uh, will your water heater blow up and why will it blow up uh, you'll find that I think I'm pretty accurate on uh, what I'm going to tell you well first we need to get a little bit of the uh, terminology ter terminology that's the word uh, straight because uh, open and close mean kind of different things depending on where you look a lot of things in life are like that. Depends on where you look. Um, the uh, term open system refers to one without a valve or some kind of device that pre uh, prevent the uh, heated water in the system caused by the water heater uh, to expand back out into the city water supply. A closed system doesn't allow the heated water to flow back out into the city water supply. And this does make a difference on uh, some of the uh, devices that you uh, really should have. Now don't confuse that with opening a tap that is you know water going down the drain because you can open a tap on either an open system or a closed system and you can close a tap you know on an open system or closed system and there's a, one other thing here that uh, um, a lot of folks are absolutely not clear on um, is that you can still have water circulating within the house pipes um, and I do uh, so I'm going to show you how that's done or some way to prevent it. Sometimes it's a good thing. Actually, in our case, it is. That, that sounds mysterious, doesn't it? Well, I'll show you. Now, I'm really not trying to be cagey here, but uh, sometimes it's not real obvious uh, what all these little pieces and parts are doing in your plumbing system. Actually, many systems, um, even electric systems, so on. But uh, depending on uh, where your house is, where you live, uh, how big your house is, what the legal requirements are for uh, your city or county or whatever, because they vary all over the place, uh, how new your system is, um, lots of variables here uh, will uh, determine how many of the things I'm going to show you in my house you actually have in yours. And certainly uh, there are places where you get your water out of the ground, so you'd have to have a pump and that kind of stuff. And, maybe filters. I, I don't have any of the uh, soft water uh, systems, things like that in my house, which uh, many of you do. So keep that in mind. I'm showing you what I have, not necessarily all the things that you have. Now some fundamental uh, fifth grade science stuff right here. At least I hope they're still teaching this kind of stuff in fifth grade or Perhaps you have to go to college nowadays to learn things like this. Uh, where in the world does the pressure come from to make the water move around in your house? Well, you could do what uh, happens around here. We live in a very hilly area in a, a newer development. So we've got these gigantic water tanks all over the place on the highest hills. And so we use this uh, fundamental source of uh, energy called uh, gravity and gravity pulls the water down to your house. They fill the tanks up I think at night or they may be doing it all the time. They're awfully big tanks. Um, but what if you live uh, at the top of the hill and the uh, water tank is below you? Well then you need a pump, right? That creates the pressure. 
And there's one other thing that's super important. Uh, you can create pressure uh, by heating the water up in a closed container, right? If it's not in a closed container, that it is, it's open to the air, you won't increase the pressure. But if you close the container up, um, you can increase the pressure. And I've given you a couple of examples there of people who have uh, increased pressure inside of things like an egg. Don't be doing this in your microwave. I guarantee you that egg, if it's still in the shell, is going to explode all over the inside. Yeah. You could use a pressure cooker. That little widget thing on the top of it is like a pressure relieving valve. And so when the pressure starts building up, as you heat up the pressure cooker, it'll let off the pressure. And then finally, uh, if you uh, want to make some noise, use your teapot, right? Everybody knows this, I hope that when you heat water up it expands so keep that in mind if you didn't know that already because you skipped fifth grade now you do so now that we know that uh, water needs to be pressurized in order to be pushed around through your plumbing system uh, we also have to be concerned about how we can control that because uh, if the water from a tank on the top of a hill comes down to your house and you're on the bottom of this very very tall hill you're going to have a whole lot of water pressure coming into your house how can you uh, control that well there's a couple ways to do it one you can regulate it that is change the pressure coming into the house by some kind of device like a pressure regulator um, to lower it so it doesn't harm your internal plumbing uh, you could relieve it by having a like a little <laughs> Gee, we just talked about that, huh? That little widget on top of your pressure cooker, that's a relief valve, huh? Um, or you could give uh, the uh, extra pressure some place to expand into, like, you know, stick a big old honking balloon on the side of the pipes or something like that. Pretty low tech, but the concept is still the same. You can regulate it, you can relieve it, or you can expand, allow it to expand, particularly as it gets hotter, right? heated water expands. Okay, let's move into this high-tech drawing. Spared no expense putting this together. Uh, we'll start from the right side, move toward the left. Uh, I come through a meter so they can charge me for the water. Uh, I come out at 100 PSI. Now, if you had a check valve, maybe you do, that would keep the water from backing up into the city water, creating a closed system, by the way. So I come in at 100 PSI, I feed the fire sprinklers at 100 PSI because I want lots of water if I have a fire in my house. Uh, I also go down to the yard sprinklers, which was a problem because when the house was first built, the freebie yard sprinklers, the, the tops would blow off of them every time I turned it on, so I had to put a pressure regulator in there too, just for the sprinklers. Um, so the 100 PSI comes in, goes through a pressure regulator, gets dropped to 60 PSI, feeds the cold water taps at uh, 60 PSI at least when there's no water running. Uh, it also goes up to the hot water tank where the water gets heated up. And guess what? The water gets heated up in a closed system, which I have because the pressure regulator is kind of like the Hotel California. The little water molecules can check in, but they can never leave. So you can't back up. So I have a closed system here. So what happens is when the hot water heater comes on, the whole system gets pressurized a little bit and that expansion tank will absorb that uh, pressure change. Now, if that's not enough, I have this little green heart thing up there called the TNP safety valve. That's a t temperature and pressure valve. If the temperature gets over about 210, it's supposed to open up and let the pressure off. Um, if it, uh, the pressure goes up to about 150 PSI or so, it's supposed to open up so that the tank doesn't explode. Yes. Yeah, not a good idea. So um, now I've got hot water going out to all the hot water spigots, the red ones like that. And I also have this uh, return. You look way over to the left and then back over and I got that recirc pump. My house is uh, fairly large and I've got two stories on it, two floors on it. And uh, at the furthest point out, which is uh, the shower and our master uh, bedroom, uh, master bathroom, uh, it would take a full three to four minutes of turning the water on before it actually got hot. Well, with a recirculating pump, I can push the button and that starts pushing the hot water all the way around the system. So now when I turn the um, shower on, it only takes about maybe 30 seconds 
to a minute to get to the point where you can jump in the shower without jumping around like a flea on a hot brick, man, um, because the water's too cold. So the recirc pump is uh, pretty cool. Um, and actually, you can do this in your own house. Uh, you can buy a recirc pump. Um, you can just stick it on the hot and cold at the furthest point out in your bathroom, like under a sink, and uh, that will suck the hot water out of the hot water tank and push it back around into the water tank, right? So it's a research system. Pretty cool. Um, the other thing there you'll see it says a leak off right there. Well that represents uh, the uh, washer uh, hot and cold and I've got a, a device that uh, if it detects any water on the floor it'll shut off the two valves, right? It's pretty cool. Um, so then uh, come down to the uh, cold water part right there and go past the uh, washer hot and cold spigots. Uh, I've got hose bibs on the outside of the house all of which are pressurized at 60 psi but in my case and I'd never seen this before I bought this house I also have an anti-siphon valve on every one of these uh, hose bibs and one of them is failing and it just makes a terrible racket when you turn the hose on so I'm going to have to remove that uh, and replace it uh, okay, so then coming down again uh, to my yard sprinklers, um, that's a standard thing. Everybody, I think, has seen this. You've got um, anti-siphon valves on all the sprinklers. But I had to put this pressure regulator in there to step down the pressure so it didn't blow the caps off. And then finally, when the water leaves your house through a drain, right, it um, might go to a couple of clean outs. I certainly would hope so. But you also have vents. You have to have vents on uh, all of your like the sinks and the toilets and so on. Interesting, uh, my very first house years and years and years ago the uh, washer kept backing up and it turns out that um, one of the vents was um, clogged up with dried out soap bubbles because we used to use soap that made lots of bubbles. We thought they made things cleaner. So you have to have vents, um, then clean outs and uh, finally go out to the uh, sewage system. Um, I don't have this either, a backwater check valve, uh, although a lot of places do. Um, this is just a little flap doodle inside the um, pipe and so if uh, sewage water wants to back up into your house, which has certainly happened a few places, this little flap doodle will close so you don't get uh, sewage water back up into your house. So that's basically all the piece parts right there. All right, so Let's look at the actual um, devices themselves. This is the uh, water meter. Um, the right side of that is a shutoff valve so they can shut up the water off coming from the street and the left side also has a shutoff valve, a little bit bigger lever, so they can shut off the house side. Um, the meter itself is pretty simple. If you do a look up on this you can get some animations on how this thing works. This particular one is known as a positive displacement meter. It's got this little whirly gig inside that kind of wobbles around and makes all the little needles and all that kind of stuff uh, work. Now you might wonder how I knew that the street pressure was 100 pounds. Well remember the little line going up to the house sprinklers it's got a pressure gauge on it um, so I can see it right there as can you uh, the street pressure here is 100 pounds 100 psi and the next piece is uh, my uh, pressure regulator there's a big expensive one which is why I figured out how to fix it for 10 bucks go check the video on that if you don't believe me and the pressure regulator, of course, uh, drops it down from 100 psi down to, in my case, I set it for 60. Actually, it looks like maybe 62, something like that. Um, this is measured on the hose bib, just uh, on the uh, outside of the wall where the pressure regulator is. Actually, if I check this any place in the house with no water running, it ought to be steady on at 60. And then uh, tracing our little high-tech drawing. Uh, we feed uh, the uh, hot water tank and in this photograph you can see all three pieces. You can see the hot water tank which I replaced uh, recently. Unbelievably expensive. It's a 70 gallon tank. Man, they get real pricey when you get up into that size. So I've got the uh, cold water coming in on the right hand side of the flue and the hot water going out on the left hand side. Um, 
feeding all the hot water spigots. Notice on the right side of the tank, um, there's a brass valve. That's the uh, temperature and pressure regulator. It's got a pipe that goes down. Actually, in our case, it goes outside, um, which is supposed to pop open uh, to keep the tank from blowing up. And then uh, on the top there, you'll see the um, the expansion tank. And all it really is is just a tank with a rubber bladder in it. And on one side is uh, cold water, and on the other side, actually the bottom the way this is shown, is uh, air, pressurized air. So when the water expands, it pushes that little rubber bladder down, uh, compresses the air inside the tank. It also uh, helps in uh, keeping water hammer. You know, when you slam the hot, the hot or cold water uh, spigots off, you can often get a bang in the pipes. That This will help uh, reduce that too. Now here's the recirculator system. I had this uh, option. I had it done when the house was built. Um, it's pretty hard to put one of these in after the house is completed uh, other than using the form I mentioned before which is a, a local recirculator underneath a sink furthest one out from the hot water tank. Uh, what this does is um, in my case it's a remote controlled so I got the little white uh, radio receiver up there that turns the pump on uh, and that will start uh, pulling hot water from the top of the tank all the way through the system and then back into um, and as you can see over here on the right hand side back into the uh, bottom in this case of the tank. Now what was interesting about this was when I had the uh, very expensive uh, hot water tank replaced recently they, uh, the plumber who put this thing in uh, said well do you want me to put this uh, recirculator pipe back in and I said I don't think so because we never re really use that thing we get hot water pretty quickly uh, at the uh, shower um, so I don't think I really need that so they didn't put it in and the first thing that happened after we cranked this little puppy up was it took for almost five minutes to get the hot water to that uh, location <laughs> and I'm trying to noodle this out. I said, why, why am I now taking forever to get hot water to the shower? Uh, when I took the pipe out, the recirculator pipe right here out, what happened was I lost the uh, recirculation path for the hot water that normally migrates up to the second floor just by you know thermal convection. I was getting a low level of um, recirculation in the system by having this return path even when I didn't operate the pump. So I had to call them out and come back out with another charge to put the pipe back in and reinstall the, um, the recirculator pump. So uh, amazingly enough if you have a return path you can actually have um, effectively a recirculation system without a pump but you'd have to do this when the house was built and you'd have to have a second floor because the hot water rises to the second floor and as it cools off within the pipes it falls back down through this return pipe um, back into the heater. So this is a definitely a worthwhile thing but uh, you have to do it when the house is built or do what I said uh, get one of the local ones to uh, recirculate the cold, the hot to cold under a sink. So the next part uh, in our little plumbing path right here is the uh, leak detection system for the uh, washer hoses, which are typically the things that fail um, and flood your house. Now, th most people don't ever do this, but there's a, a lever that turns the hot and cold water off. It's between the uh, two solenoids in the top picture. But almost no one ever remembers to do that. And furthermore, um, if like uh, we, we installed a um, front load washer on a pedestal, and that jacks the whole thing up to the point where you can't actually reach back in there to turn that uh, lever, hot and cold lever, on and off. It's really a pain. So these become almost a necessity. Um, what happens is you got a little plate on the floor that uh, will kind of short out. It's it's a printed circuit board um, and it's attached to this controller box up here on the lower right hand picture. And when uh, it detects water it activates the two solenoids and shuts off the hot and cold uh, water to the hoses which you move down to the bottom um, and screw back onto those two solenoids. So 
basically you stick the solenoids between the uh, the taps and the uh, hoses and uh, you can get these for uh, every place you can get one for each one of the toilet feeds uh, just any place where there's water you can put one of these in certainly recommend doing this if um, you don't regularly shut off the hot and cold particularly when you leave the house which is almost always when the things break I speak from experience Next up is uh, the um, anti-siphon valves that are stuck on uh, the outside of every one of these hose bibs. It's that kind of fat looking little ring thing right there. The, the plastic thing is a new hose we just stuck on there. But these um, are like an air brake, very similar to the uh, anti-siphon valves on your sprinkler system. Um, and normally they don't do anything. You can't really tell that they're doing anything. Um, and until you uh, turn off the water and depending on the way the hose is laying on the ground and so on you can actually see some water come back out of these on occasion so it's an anti-siphon valve unfortunately they're, they're put on when the house was built and they're uh, screwed on and then set with a, uh, a allen screw which is almost impossible to get out so I've got to drill one of these out because it's making so much noise. Uh, it just rattles all over the house. So, But in any case, I guess they're a good idea. Uh, although we seem, seem to have existed without them for an awful long time, but uh, must be another new legal requirement. So the next thing in our little drawing is the uh, sprinklers on the outside. Now the three devices that you see with the black caps on them, those are the anti-siphon valves. So uh, the left side of those, which you can't see very well, at least in the, the picture I'm looking at because it's pretty small, that's the actual valve that turns the water on and off and the uh, little round cap thing is the air brake. It's got a little rubber uh, diaphragm in there that will flop down. Um, to keep uh, dirty water from being sucked back up into the system. So when you turn the water on, of course, it's pushing out to the sprinklers. When you turn it off, then the little flap opens up and does not allow water to get sucked back up. Uh, the thing that I have that uh, seems to be a, a bit more unusual is that um, the um, house builder was running the sprinklers uh, directly off the 100-pound main line. <laughs> and... Uh, it was blowing the caps off my little sprinkler heads. They don't like 100 pounds. Uh, so I had to put my own little regulator in. That's the little black thing at the bottom of that white pipe right there. So I took the, took the pressure down so it didn't blow the sprinklers up all the time. So now we can move down to the drain system. We've got water going all over the place, some of which comes down through the drain. Some of it just goes out on the lawn. But uh, this is uh, just one example of a, a drain access so that you can uh, run a snake down in there and clean it out. I actually have two of these. They're just about a foot apart and they're in my um, one car garage. I pulled these off to take a photo of this and, which didn't come out very well so I couldn't show you but um, one of these uh, goes down about four feet, five feet. Actually both of them do and uh, makes a sweep out toward the street so you could push a, a, a snake down through there and clean out toward the street and the other one just a little closer to the street looks the other way when you look down into it you could push a snake in and that goes back toward the house so um, they, all they are is just clean outs. I have several clean outs around the house these were just the two on the main going out to the street um, I don't have a um, anti-black backflow uh, valve at my house. Apparently they deemed it not legally necessary. So this is about as close as I can get to a backwater check valve. Uh, I don't know if this would do you a whole lot of good if the uh, water was really backing up from the main sewer line. I don't think you could run around fast enough uh, to do a plunger in all the toilets. So hopefully uh, I'll never have that happen. They've uh, designed the sewage system here well enough that uh, no plunger will be required. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, the main thing to remember is if you have a closed system, uh, your water heater will definitely affect the pressure within the system and you need these uh, compensating and uh, safety devices uh, associated with the water heater to keep uh, problems from occurring, you know, making 
causing leaks in your plumbing systems, uh, dripping water from faucets, uh, leaking toilet uh, controllers, all that kind of stuff is uh, associated with uh, pressure issues inside your house. So please do not, unless you really know what you're talking about, tell me that uh, heating water up in a system, a closed system, doesn't change the pressure because um, I will have to respectfully disagree. So 10-4, Roger, Rubber Ducky, thanks for watching. Um, if you didn't get here from here, you might want to go to our channel. I have a lot of other videos up there, which you certainly are welcome to challenge, as long as you do it respectfully. There you go, over and out.